Uh, this is planet A. Uh, and you and I and 7.3 billion people share planet A with about a million animal species and half a million plant species. This is home and there is no planet B. We also have plan A. And if we look at plan A, that involves agriculture in which we use a tiny proportion of the biodiversity of the planet to feed 7.3 billion people. Wheat, rice, maize and soya provide 75% of the world's food. Will those crops be sufficient to feed 10 billion people in the hotter climates of the future? Just take one crop, maize. Not only does maize feed people and provide food, it provides fodder, it provides animal feed, and increasingly it's a source of material for biofuels to feed our engines. Is this the basis on which we should be looking for agriculture for a hotter climate? Our diets are increasingly uniform, and we have ingredients that are shipped vast distances around the world from ingredients that are far from, uh, to places where they are far from their centers of production, to produce almost identical food across the planet for more and more people in the new developed com developing countries. If we take Europe and Asia, we see supermarket aisles in which identical products are sold from very, very few species transported long supply chains in which those supply chains are increasingly vulnerable to provide identical products across the planet. Now, in September, the United Nations announced the, United, uh, the Sustainable Development Agenda, and six of those Sustainable Development Goals are related to agriculture. And we can see those goals in terms of agriculture, uh, consumption, life on land, zero hunger, climate action, and a partnerships for those goals. We need a plan B that looks at agricultural diversification in terms of clean energy, in terms of uh, sustainable and responsible production systems in terms of diversification of land use and landscapes and particularly new crops that can be used to diversify agriculture in the hotter climates. There is no plan B for a plus three world. There is no plan B for a plus three world. That means the crops we now use to produce the majority of the food on the planet will increasingly be under pressure and the place where that pressure will occur will be in the developing tropics in which we see the yields of the major crops decline and we see other parts of the world which are the major exporting regions in which the yields of those crops will increase. What will we do in regions in which those crops can no longer be grown for the local production systems that increasingly deply, de depend on those long supply chains from elsewhere in the world? We need to find clever, intelligent diversification options for crops that are people's crops, that they grow themselves, but they have at the moment limited markets and li uh, limited uh, external uses for those crops. We need to see how those crops can actually be intelligent options for us because those crops contain nutrition, they contain ingredients in which we can actually find potential markets, and of course they are closer to the centers of production. They are people's crops, and we should find chains and opportunities to find new ways to develop those crops into crops that add to the major crops of the world. We can't just grow them in fields, we've got to find the whole research value chain in terms of growing the genetic resources of those crops, the proximate composition analysis, cuisines and desirable products that consumers in their markets actually want to have those crops because not only are they marketable, they're nutritious. We need smart agriculture for landscapes that is climate smart and smart in terms of end uses for products that are more than just the three crops grown as monocultures around the world. They're giving us new opportunities, enormous opportunities for agriculture to diversify into a new paradigm. We take something like an intercrop here, enormous opportunities for us to use information technologies, new ways of looking at systems, uh, remote sensing, modeling, and using those crops to find production and end uses closer to their markets to replace the major monocultures. In this case, you can see oil palm in the background. We need, now more than half the world lives in cities. We need agriculture to be in cities. We need to redefine our urban landscape to include agriculture from diverse production systems closer to those people who actually need those crops and can see the products from them. 
we've got to look at how we look at urban agriculture as a productive and economically sustainable and natural resource management system that uses new technologies, that uses new market opportunities in cities where the majority of people will live. Can we find agriculture that actually delivers just-in-time products to the end user within meters of the place those crops are being grown? Why do we use food crops to feed fuel engines? Why don't we use crops that grow on marginal lands, on saline soils, on poor soils, in which we can find feedstocks to find diverse uses of bioenergy beyond, beyond using the main crops over and over again. We can find on marginal soils a number of crops and we can look at feedstocks in engine systems and, and, and gasification systems in which those crops not only will provide feedstock, they can provide green chemicals, they can provide biomaterials and end uses to diversify the entire agricultural system. Now for all of this, we need an action plan, a global action plan for agricultural diversification that on Monday we will launch in Paris. We want you to sign that declaration, the Paris Declaration on Agricultural Diversification, to show that this is actually an opportunity for us to find green energy, to find sustainable production systems, to use the land and the landscapes in a more uh, climate smart uh, system and opportunities for us to find uses for crops because plan B is the plus three world for which we have no alternatives because there is no planet B. Thank you.